Hello, everyone coming in. This is John Labor. We'll get started here in about a minute and a half. All right, let's get started. Good afternoon or good day, everyone. This is John Lieber with GoEngineer. This is the third of a four part series on SolidWorks Electrical. Uh, my partner at, uh, here at GoEngineer, Michael Nolte, has been uh, going over a lot of the schematic side of harnessing and creating cable routes, um, both for schematic, like I said, and a little bit into the 3D. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the schematic side, but I do want to just kind of walk through a uh, start the finish creation of a basic harness using SolidWorks Electrical. And then we'll start going into some of the details of what we have to do or what kind of features we have to add to the SolidWorks models. I um, want to walk through the wizard that is in SolidWorks Electrical. And just as a side note, I will actually be using uh, the most recent or the newest version of SolidWorks uh, that hasn't been, uh, I don't want to say it's not released, it's available in pre-release. Um, I do want to say that if uh, this makes sense to you as far as product versions um, being pre-release, I would not use this for production. But so far, we've been banging away on this and I have yet to have any kinds of issues. So that's a, a good thing. So when 2023 does get released uh, sometime in November, um, you can feel pretty confident in uh, upgrading. So how do we get started here? Um, there's th two pieces to SolidWorks Electrical. There is a schematic piece and a piece that is an add-in for SolidWorks. And one of the biggest questions that I get, uh, even from our team here at GoEngineer, is can we use SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D without the schematic software? And the answer to that is no. Um, we do have the ability to create routes uh, for wires, cables, harnesses. We can actually even do ribbon cables with the SOLIDWORKS Premium add-in called SOLIDWORKS Routing. And um, <clears throat> we will probably be doing a, a webinar on that here sometime in the near future. So. Keep an eye out um, for a notification on that. Um, what we're going to be focused here on is SolidWorks Electrical. So you can see here, this is a, an application here. So we have the SolidWorks application in the background, and I have my SolidWorks Electrical schematic application here in the foreground. And this is where we're going to start everything. Now, SolidWorks Electrical is a SQL-based backend, which just simply means we have Microsoft SQL running in the backend. And then when I create projects by coming up here and saying, I want to create a new project, I can see all the projects that I've ever created here. And what's really cool here is if I was in a scenario um, like where I have Michael and Steven and Mallory and Sherry, Matthew, Nathan, I mean, we have a whole team here at GoEngineer that uh, works with the electrical product exclusively. Um, so if you call in the technical support or something like that and say, hey, I have a, a question about SolidWorks Electrical, uh, you're going to be transferred over to our GoEngineer electrical team. Um, but if Matthew makes a project, I can see that project that Matthew makes, which means that we can work concurrently or cooperatively. And what I mean by concurrently or cooperatively is when we're doing things like panel design, uh, we may have Matthew working on like the high voltage system. So he's gonna be working with relays and motors, and then I can be working on uh, low voltage stuff, the, the coils of the relays, the buttons, the switches, the emergency stops, the lighting, that kind of fun stuff. So we can work concurrently in the same project at the same time. And when I talk about cooperatively is I might ask Matthew to create uh, the 3D route because he's really, really good at SolidWorks, but I'm going to create the schematics and we can actually do this at the same time to where I can be creating schematics of different harnesses. And as soon as I get a harness done, um, Matthew can go into SolidWorks and start working on routing that harness type of thing. So we have a concurrent and a cooperative 
type of environment here. Uh, for the webinar, it's just going to be me today. So I'm going to go in and say, let's create a project. Now, one of the things I do want to make sure we understand here is we have templates, just like SolidWorks, where I might have an inch template, a metric template. Here I have templates that represent like controls and automation, uh, aerospace and mil spec projects, I have a package sorting system, which is for uh, like a conveyor system. So I kind of have everything laid out for creating schematics for a conveyor. I also do have a P&ID demo because one thing a lot of people don't realize is from a schematic perspective, SolidWorks Electrical is a schematic creation tool. So we can create electrical schematics for panel designs, instrumentation, piping, tubing. It really doesn't matter. As long as it's schematic related, we can create uh, schematics for pretty much anything. But in this particular case, I'm just gonna use out of the box settings here. So I'm gonna select the ANSI template, pick my program language, and then specify the project name. So we're just gonna call this webinar, web uh, harness one. And then click on okay. And this is gonna create my electrical project. Once I do this, it actually becomes available to everyone that's in my electrical environment, so in, in my company. And on the left-hand side here, even though that it's a SQL database, we treat SOLIDWORKS Electrical like if there were files. So I can have different files here. I can have a cover page, a drawing list, a line diagrams, power diagrams, control diagrams. But in this particular case, I'm just gonna actually get rid of all these here, hit delete, and get rid of them all. Okay, now those came up because of my template. If I wanted to always start with no documents, I can create a template that says no documents and it works. But if I always create a power diagram and a control diagram, I can have that set up in my template. The reason why I want to do this is because two reasons. One, um, the, the idea of power and control doesn't make a lot of sense for doing harnesses. But I did want to introduce you to this idea of line diagrams and schemes. Now, a scheme is going to be your traditional multi-wire diagram, where if I have two connectors, I'm going to draw wires for each one of those connectors. Now, however, in a wiring line diagram, this is kind of a system or a bird's eye overview. And what I mean by that is instead of defining the, the wires, we're just going to say I have a connector on one side, a connector on the other side, and I'm going to draw a line in between those to illustrate that they're connected. So we do that by just coming in and saying, I'm going to insert a symbol and I'm going to come in and say, I'm going to work with connectors and I've just got pretty pictures. Now, <clears throat> these pictures can be anything you want. So like it can be just a, a profile of the connector. It can be maybe the front end so you can see all the pins. It can be a graphic. What I did here or what we can do here is actually inside of SolidWorks. If I go over here to SolidWorks and say, I want to open a part. So we'll go in here, open a part, and I'll just say, let's see, uh, something like this. So, or let's pick this one. So I've got this part here, and that's going to open up here inside of SolidWorks. And I'm going to orientate this how I want it to look. So let's get something like that. And uh, I'm not really that interested in all the, the pretty graphics and the reflections. So I'm going to turn something called real view off. And I'm actually going to change my background to a plain white background. So there's that plain white background. Once I've got this set up the way I want, I can simply come in here and say, go to the view command. And this is just part of SolidWorks. This isn't something that has uh, special because we're using SolidWorks electrical. But if I go here, I can go to screen capture and just click image capture. And the difference between doing this and like doing a screenshot is this image capture. If I go to Microsoft Paint, for example, and paste that capture. You notice I don't get the feature manager, I don't get my command manager, or the little icons up here, I don't get my cursor. Um, it's just a picture of the graphics area. And then I'm gonna save this. And if you're not using SOLIDWORKS 2023, what you do is you come in and you say, I wanna save this as a bitmap. And I'd say maybe like a 24 bit or 256 color bitmap, and then give it a name. So this is, uh, e-stop like that and then we hit save 
One of the really cool things that we have in 2023 that's coming up is we can actually save this as like a PNG file or a JPEG. You can actually save it as a GIF file or a GIF file, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, but I will note, I've already tried, uh, no animated GIFs in, in our schematics. So, But uh, for everyone's use, we'll go ahead and say, we're going to save this as a bitmap file and just click save. Oh, I got to actually put it somewhere. Look on the desktop and I'll create a folder called the webinar. So I'm going to save that. And now I have a bitmap of this. And if I go back to SolidWorks Electrical, um, I want that e stop right here, for example. So I'm going to close this. Close that here. And I'm going to go to my library and come here to symbol management. And I'm going to go to my buttons and switches, buttons and switches right here, and say, I would like to create a new symbol. For description, we're going to say emergency stop. And then I'm just going to click on OK. Then I'll double click on that. And then I will go to the draw commands. And you'll see right here, I can insert blocks. So if you have like a, a DXF uh, from SolidWorks or AutoCAD or DraftSite, CADKey, BobCAD, TurboCAD, Steve CAD, whatever, you, if you have a block, you can import those. But I'm going to go ahead and say, let's insert an image. And then go to my desktop, go to my webinar folder, and I can select my files. Now you'll see here, I have a lot of options in uh, SolidWorks Electrical 2022. Your option will be all images. Now, what I did here is I may not have actually saved the file. So let's just paste that back in here and go to File, Save, Webinar, and I'm, sure I'm going to do the 256 this time. So e stop BMP. Save that there. All right, and we'll close this. Oh, webinar parts. I get into the wrong folder. Webinar. So there's that e stop button. So we're going to put that here. Um, I'm going to specify the insertion point by uh, either putting it into a specific XY position, or I can just say specify later for scale. I'm going to say specify later as well. And what that simply allows me to do by click, uh, clicking check boxes here, I can click on OK. And then if I zoom way out here, where's the picture? Well, what it's looking for me to do is to actually specify a start point. So I'm going to just put it right here in the corner. And then as I pull this out, I can specify size. The hardest part about this is how do I know how big this is? So one of the things we can do is maybe draw uh, a rectangle or a box. So I can say, let's start this right here and then pull this out and specify a size here. Or I can come in here and say, this is going to be uh, 30 by 30. I just want a 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter box. And then You'll see my picture's way too big, so I can select the picture right here. So I can just double click on that and then click on that corner and then drag it down here so it fits right there in that picture. So let's move this up a little bit. Let's see right here what's happening is my snaps are getting in the way, so I'm just going to turn off the snaps. It's a picture and just say we're going to pop that right there. And then right up the top here, I might want to put like mark identification um, or the reference designator. So we'll right click on that and say insert an attribute and say, let's place the short tag, click on okay. And then we are going to censor that. Let's just put it right here. We'll hit save, control S, we can hit the save button up here. Or if you close it, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna save it if you haven't saved it? And then if I go back here to my symbol management, there's that new button I just created. And I can double click on that. Oh, I'm in, uh, in, I'm in the library still. Let's go back to line diagram and then say insert symbol. And if I go to buttons and switches, here it is. But where did it go? So this is the first thing I want to talk about as far as like best practices type thing. When you're creating your symbols, or more specifically, when we're inserting the symbols, we have all these cool classifications so you can quickly find things. So if I was looking for buttons and switches, I should be able to go to buttons and switches and find it. If I was looking for a set of connectors, I go to connectors, I can find it. But when in this particular case, if I go to buttons and switches, I don't see 
the button that I just created. So why, what's going on here? You kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing because if I go back into the library, and go to my symbol management, you see it's right here. It is in my library. But if I right click on this and go to its properties, two things I'm looking at is what class is it? Buttons and switches, that makes sense. But right here under my symbol type, this became a multi-wire symbol. And the one thing I wanted to point out here, and this is so you don't have to take the time to call up technical support to say, hey, I created a symbol, but I can't find it when I go to use it, is we have to pay attention to the symbol type. I just created a line diagram, but when I created the button or the symbol, I said it's a schematic symbol. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here and I see right here, line diagram. And then when I click on OK, I go back into my schematic tool for the line diagram functions, and hit insert symbol, there's my emergency stop. So that's the kind of the first tip or first two tips um, that I wanted to share with you is when you're working inside of SolidWorks Electrical, we do provide a huge library of components or symbols. And while I'd love to say we're gonna provide you with every symbol that you could ever want, that would be misleading. It'd be wrong. Um, in this particular case, I wanted an emergency stop button. I didn't have any, so I created one. I just used the power of SolidWorks to create that, open a 3D model, rotate it around. I didn't have to ask anybody to draw it. I didn't have to find a picture that had it in the right orientation I wanted and everything, because I might, if I do a Google search, it might have that, but it might be looking at it head on or a, a top view or something like that. So use the power of SolidWorks, just do a screenshot, bring this guy in here, and then I can place that here. It's still gonna bring up my properties. So it's a switch, it became switch one. And when I click on okay, you'll see here's my brand new symbol with my E stop in there. But how does this work when we're talking about um, the symbols for components for a schematic where we're gonna do multi-wires? Well, there's two things that we have to think about there. Number one, we're gonna have our wires. And when we go to draw the wires, so if I right click here and say new scheme this time, and I go to draw the wires. So if I say, I wanna draw uh, a wires here, and I want four of them, we have spacing. Now this spacing here, the defaults out of the box settings inside of SolidWorks, all the symbols that SolidWorks provides are all spaced off of 0.25 inches or quarter inch spacing. And what that means is if I come in here and insert any symbol from these libraries here with a few exceptions. So if I come in here and say, I'm looking for uh, fuses and there's my fuse symbol and I click select. When I go to place this in here, the cursor is always gonna be at position one, okay? So pin one for SolidWorks provided symbols. The second thing is, is when I go in here and place this, the spacing between the connection points, so these red dots, is either gonna be 0.25 inches or five millimeters. So if you build your symbols and just keep that in mind, when I come in here to say, I'm gonna draw uh, four single wires, or I can say draw a group of wires for like a three-phase system, I need four wires here. I don't know if you'd necessarily switch <clears throat> or put a fuse on neutral, but for our purposes, we'll go ahead and do that. And I come over here, the spacing just defaults here to 0.25 because I'm in inches in the project. And when I click here, all the wires will line up with the connection points. So when you're creating your own symbols, that is something you need to think about when you are defining these connection points. What are the defaults inside of SolidWorks? And if you stay consistent, <clears throat> you won't have any issues. It's where we're inconsistent. If I were to create symbols at 0.25, but Matt creates symbols and he puts them at 0.3 or half inch increments. We have to remember, oh, when I'm using matte symbols, I have to change my spacing to 0.5. If I'm using my symbols, I can use 0.25, which is the system default, <coughs> excuse me, system default. So whatever you choose, be consistent, all right? But the question comes up a lot of times is, I create, <coughs> excuse me, So I have uh, some water on the side here. Um, I create schematics where they're kind of more of an illustration where it looks like the device. <clears throat> and 
and I can't find anything in the SOLIDWORKS libraries that look like the device, but that's what I want to use. So again, using or leveraging the power of SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to flip back to SOLIDWORKS here real quick, and I'm going to go grab a relay. So I'm going to go open and grab this relay part right here. So here's SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to go here and say, what does the front view look like? That's what I want it to look like. Now, if I measure between here and here, go in here to evaluate and measure, and what is the distance between this circle and this circle, you'll see it's not quite 0.25 inches or five millimeters. It's almost four. So that's one of the things I'm thinking about when I'm looking at this. But if I switch this over here to wireframe, that's what I want my symbol to look like. And then I can adjust sizing and everything once I get a nice 2D representation of this. So again, being able to leverage the power of SOLIDWORKS, I'm just going to right click on the part and say export VXF DWG. And then it says, where, what do you want to call it? Where do you want to save it? I'll go back to desktop, we'll go to webinar, and I'm just going to save it with the part number 004251. Uh, I, I like DWGs over DXFs. So we'll say DWG and hit save. And then it's wanting to know what I want to export. And I could just export this face or this face and that face, or go through and select all these, or I can just come here to annotation views and say the current view that I'm looking at, or I could actually pick like front view. I know that's where I went, but I'm just gonna say current. You can actually include multiple views, so like a front view and a right view. But what that's actually gonna do is create two DWGs, one with the front, one with the right. And then, uh, I can actually control where the origin or uh, zero zero is. In this particular case, I don't really care. I might want it there, or I might want it here, or up here, wherever, whatever makes the most sense to you. But we're going to go ahead and hit the checkbox. And then it's going to give me a preview of what that DWG is going to look like. And if I didn't want this arc right here, I could actually come over here, say remove entities, uh, or select the object first and hit remove entities. And I could say, let's not have any of this stuff here. It's not critical to what I want in SOLIDWORKS, electrical, so we can remove those entities. In my case, I do want those, so I can just quickly undo the, uh, the removals and then hit save. Now, when it does this, it's going to export it one-to-one. -one. So if I go back into SOLIDWORKS electrical and measure the distance, it's going to be 3.99 something. So we can just come back here. We'll go to library and symbol management. And this was a relay, so I'm going to go to contact or relays. Then I'll right click, just like I did for the line diagram, say new, or click the new button up here. And then I'm going to say uh, this is the uh, relay symbol. But I'm going to pay specific attention to the symbol type right here multi wire, not a line diagram this time. So just paying attention to that. Clicking on OK, it's going to create that, double click on it. And then pan this over here. So right there, that red circle, that's the insertion point. When I go to insert this symbol, this is where the cursor is going to be. So I like to keep that at the pin one. And then I'm going to go here to my draw tab and say insert block, browse. We're going to go to this webinar. And there is that TWG I just created. Click on open. And again, for scale, I'm going to specify insertion point. I'm going to specify later which means when I click on OK. So my insertion point from the DWG was in the center of the block. And what I'm going to do here is just try to highlight this and move this around here. Again, I can play with the snap settings. In my case, I'm just going to turn off the snap settings. This is just the graphic. And then I can say, you know what? I want my uh, insertion point to be right there. And then the scale factor. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to give it some type of scale. Apparently I move my mouse when I, so I can do that. And then how I actually do this, this isn't a webinar on symbol creation. If that is something that you're interested in, please let us know. Send an email to marketing at Go Engineer. Or you can even send it to support at Go Engineer. You can send it to me or Steven or Michael, anybody on the team and say, hey, I'd like to, like to see a webinar on how did John create these symbols and what are all the different options? And we'll, we'll get a uh, webinar scheduled for you. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a line right here at zero. 
and then I'm going to go straight up. Now here I'm going to turn on my snaps, so it goes straight up like that. And then I'm going to take that line, go to Modify, and Array, and say I want up the top here, up one, two, three, four, five, but I want a little space right here. So let's say uh, one row, but five columns. Okay, so you're always going to include the original there. And then for the spacing right here, for my column spacing, I'm going to say five inches or 0.25 millimeters. So before I do that, one of the things I should have paid attention to when I'm creating the library items, if I go in here and look at any of these and go to properties, there is a drawing unit system right here. So here's my third major point that I want to cover for you. When you create your symbol, you're going to specify your unit of measurement. This sets up some scaling functions inside of SOLIDWORKS for the back end when we're inserting a metric symbol into an inch project or an inch symbol into a metric project. It sets up some scaling. So because that setup happens as soon as you create it, best practice, don't change the drawing unit system after you've created something. Okay. So if you want this to be a metric, say metric. If you want it to be an inches, say inches. Um, don't change it after the fact because it sets up some scaling in the background and you can work with it. It just it's going to be a lot more work. It's not hard, just more work. I hate more work. So I know I'm in millimeters. If you're not sure, you can right click down here at the bottom right hand corner. And right here, it's going to tell you metric. So I need these to be spaced five millimeters apart from each other to be consistent with all the other symbols in my library. So again, I'm gonna go back to this modify command. We're gonna click on array, one row, five columns. But right here, we're gonna say space them five millimeters apart from each other. And then I'm gonna select my line right here, select that line, then hit the enter key. That will allow the selected objects there. And then when I click on okay, it will create those five lines. You can see <clears throat> this symbol is way too big. So I'm gonna select the symbol and come in here and say scale and just start here at zero and then as i move my mouse i can start uh scaling it now right here my problem is is my grid is set to five or ten millimeters so i have very little control over that so i'm just going to come down here and turn the grid off and actually zoom in a little bit and i'm just kind of eyeballing this in to say uh right about here not going to be perfectly lined up, but right there. So these lines are pretty much in the center of those circles. And then I could take this one and instead of, <coughs> excuse me, doing another array because I should have gone to six, I'm going to use this multi copy command. By specifying multiple copy, I can select what I want to copy or where, where I'm going to uh, have a base. So right here. And then as I move this, I'm going to actually come back here. I'm going to turn on my grid, right click on this, and make sure that my snap spacing is set to five. And then it's going to just snap the five millimeter increments. So if I click here, that's going to be the five millimeter. I could have done that, used the multiple copy, and just copy this first one and snap the five, snap the five, snap the five, and just got all five of those or six of them. And then I can simply delete this guy right there. And I'm good, I'm happy. And then I can add my connection points. Now, again, this isn't uh, a webinar on how to create symbols, so I wanna finish this up. Uh, but real quick, I could go in here and say, I wanna add uh, my connection points. So I'd say, let's add, uh, this is for normally open contacts, power. And the reality is I just need four of those. This would be the coil. So we're gonna say normally open power contacts. I need four circuits. And I'm going to have an in and an out. Well, I haven't done anything over here, so I've got that. And then I'll add one more for my coil. I'll come in here and say relay coil. I just need one of those. Um, for the number of circuits for the this, I do need four. And I just click on OK. And at this point, hit the space bar to rotate this. This little big circle is basically saying where's the wire going to come from in the schematic. So it's going to come from the top. And then just let it snap right there. And then right here, circuit one. So where does it come out of the schematic? Hit the space bar a couple times. And then I can come over here and position this as uh, wherever I, I want to position it. So I get that. And then come over here. Let's make sure I change this. 
Let's change this to 2.5. There, space, space, and then I could put this in here. But this is why I'm saying we do need to pay attention. We may have to play with the scaling a little bit, but the key factor was the fact that we can use the power of SolidWorks to do what I'll say is 90% of the work in creating your symbol. So you're probably asking yourself at this point, John, why are you showing me these symbols with emergency stops and relays? And you said this is a webinar for harnessing and cables and that kind of fun stuff. And the reason why is because if we look at the library that ships with SolidWorks, so if I go to library and go to symbol management and look at the connectors, you'll see we have quite a few different variations of connector symbols. Um, up here at the top, I have something that looks kind of like a, a mil spec style connector. I've got pictures. And then I've got these guys right here that say, okay, these are six pins and seven pins and eight pins, but you notice they actually say mail pins. And then I have connector with left with 10 pins, but it doesn't say male or female. And that's because when we define our connectors, okay? So if I uh, double click on one of these, so if I double click on that, that will open this up. When we define these circuits for our connectors, I mean, look at this right here. So I have two, it's a two position connector and it says it's a terminal. Well, if I click on this and look over here on the right hand side under circuit types, you see we have auxiliary female pin, auxiliary male pin, we have ground pins, miscellaneous pins, power female, power male, relay coil terminal. And if I click on this more circuit types, you can see we actually have a huge variety of types of circuits. Now, traditionally, when we're talking about connectors, it's male pins, female pins or terminals. But the problem that we have here and it's it's not a problem but it's it's something to think about is when i look at this library of connectors connector symbols each one of these is going to have defined as either male pins female pins terminals power male power female and most companies don't really use a huge variety of connectors you might maybe use like a four pin connector an eight pin connector and a 16 pin connector. So you need three symbols, but those connectors could be male or female. So instead of needing four symbols, we need eight symbols, four male symbols and four female symbols. And if we continue this path here and you have a wide variety of connectors that you use, um, you could say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, all the way up to 150 you would have to have a unique symbol for every configuration of pins, male, and then a unique symbol for all the female configurations. So SolidWorks gave us a, a tool to kind of not have to deal with that at all, okay? So if I go here in the multi-wire schematic and go to schematic, we have a button right here called insert connector. And what this allows me to do is I can say, I want to insert a connector, and then we're going to actually go by part number first. We're going to specify a part number. So right now I'm in connectors, and I've just chosen Molex for the webinar. No, we don't have any relationship with Molex. I don't get side money or anything like that. It's just who I picked. Um, and I'm going to hit search. So here's my list of Molex connectors. And right here on the circuits thing, I can see there's two pins, four pins, zero pins that doesn't make a lot of sense um 12 12 12 and 6. so let's say this this 39012126 let's say that was a six pin connector let's see if the description tells us um right here 12 so it's a 12 position connector i'm guessing based off the description um right here before i actually select the part number i can right click go to properties and sure enough if i look at the circuits and terminals Whoever created this part number, guilty, um, but whoever created this part number didn't add any information about are they male pins, are they female pins, what are their, the pin names, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, what, what's, what's going on? So I'm going to just click here and say add, this add multiple, okay? And the reason why I click add multiple versus just add is because I can click on this add button here and say, these are going to be male pins. 
I need 12 of them. And each one of those is going to have one connection point. Then click on OK. And it added all 12 of those for me automatically instead of having to hit add, 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 add 12 times. So pretty cool there for me. Then at this point, I'm going to shift select all these pins and then come down here and look. This is the pin configuration. So this is where I come in and say, this is pin one. I'm going to hit the down arrow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Now, the orientation for connectors, we don't use orientations. Orientations are really kind of geared towards terminal blocks because we're going to have an input and an output. So if I would actually look at this and see, we have incoming, outgoing. But for connector, it's just, it's a pin. If these pins had, uh, let's say I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to put a ferrule at the end of it and then jab that into the connector. I'm going to select all these. I'm going to click wire termination. If I expand this, it actually run wire termination type. And then I'm going to click on this. And then we have all these different wire termination types available. And then I can say that's a pin. So we're going to put a pin on the end of the wire and then jam that into the connector. So select. And now all those have been assigned pin. Just by shift selecting, I can do all of them at once. And then right here, this column would be maximum number of wires. These are for the design rule checks. If the manufacturer or company policy says we're not, you're not allowed to put more than one wire in a pin for a connector, you can set this as one. And then if we accidentally put two wires into a pin, the design rule check is going to come back and yell at you and say, don't do that. And then I'm going to skip mnemonic here real quick and look at these things right here. So we can specify a minimum and a maximum wire size. So typically when you look at a connector, it will say 18 to 20. So you can actually type 18, 20. And again, the design rule check will come back and say, well, if you put a 22 gauge wire in there, that's wrong. I want to, I want to be notified. I made a mistake. So you can do that here with the minimum and maximum. Uh, you can do by cross section or by gauge. Um, I just don't have the, enough room here to show the, the maximum side. So, but this mnemonic. Now, I'm 50 50 on this as to whether or not you add this to the part number or you add it to the connector after it's been placed. And the reason why is because for general purpose, pin one might be transmit, might be receive, it might be plus five voltage, it might be. Plus 12 voltage. Now, if this part number, pin one, will always be plus 12 volts, you can add it here at the part number. And then you don't have to add it in the schematic after you've placed it. I want the flexibility of defining what pin one is going to be used for. So I'm not going to insert anything in this mnemonic field. I'm just going to come over here and click on OK. And that will update this. If you notice, it now says there's 12 pins here. And I'm good to go. The really cool thing is, is that modification I just made, it's modified in the master database. And if Matt comes in and grabs this part number, it's going to have 12 pins. It's not going to be blank. He won't have to do the same thing over, uh, say, do the same thing I just did. Anything I change automatically uh, transfers to the entire company. But I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'll hit the plus sign. So that's in here. Michael did talk about how you can come in here and we have base and auxiliary and accessories. Um, things like pins would be accessories. And um, if I come in here and I'll remove the limit of part uh, manufacturers by Molex and I do a search, you'll see I've got a whole bunch of accessory components like back shells. I've got some wedge locks, some sockets, um, string release. Here's a plug seal or cavity seal. Um, so you can go in and you can create a kit or an assembly for your connector. But I know Michael talked about that in his previous webinars, uh, one of the previous webinars um, for this series. So we're just going to use a single part number at this point. Hit select. And then it's going to give it a name. Now, really interesting uh, point here is for connectors, we have a class. And that class has a root, which is currently set the X and I like using J and P for Jack and plug. Um, I know uh, companies like Deutsch have uh, socket and um, P, S and P so socket and plug 
I forget exactly what they're called, but they differentiate between male and female. One really cool thing about SolidWorks Selectable, it is configurable or customizable. So when you go into your SolidWorks installation, you can create a classification called male pins and set this root to be P. And then uh, female pins, create a classification called female pins and set it to uh, Jack. And um, I think I got those backwards, but you can create your own classifications and say for this class, it's got this letter and for that class, it's got this letter. But right now I just have a class called connectors and then I can come in here as I'm placing things and just I can call this con, for example, for connector being lazy here. So that's going to be con and it will number it con one for me. I'm still in the automation. I've just kind of customized the automation on the fly. And we'll click on OK. And then you see I get this nice preview right here. I could come over here and say I want to insert a symbol and come over here and try to find the symbol. But if we look here, there are no 12 pin connector symbols. I got to stop, go into my library, create a 12 pin symbol. So by using the connector command right here, insert connector, I can select what's called configuration. So I can say I want a 12 pin symbol that doesn't show any symbols for the type of pin. So right here, it's just my rectangle. I can use rounded corners or square corners type of thing. So there's my square and round. Um, but this right here is where it's really kind of cool. So what this allows me to do here is if you look at the size, oh, let's look at the other configurations first. Sorry, almost got ahead. So I've got without pin symbols and then with pin symbols. So that's what this is here. If we zoom in here, you can see that's the, the symbol for a male pin. And then, um, so I like that. Uh, I had this small one that just changes the size. I created one that's a little bit smaller. On this one, actually, the connection points are, uh, I think they're an eighth of an inch apart from each other. So bigger connectors, but I don't want to have to use a bigger page type of thing. Um, but we're just going to use this with pin symbols. And then down here, it lists out all the pins. So I know, hey, these are all male pins because we could have connectors that have male and female pins in them. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. Um, and then the terminal names. And then if there were any mnemonics, it would list that here. But what I can do at this point is if I only want to display six pins right now, I can hit this little checkbox here and say, I only want six pins. And then I can actually come down here and pick which pin. So I, let's say I want every other pin. So I can pick one, three, five, seven, nine, 11. And then I know this, I said every other pin, but if I come over here and try to click 12, it won't let me because I said, I want to limit to six pins. But more importantly, it's now created a six pin symbol. So with the insert connector, I don't have to have a pre-made symbol for connectors, which means I don't have to have a 12 pin male, a 12 pin female. And then if I decide I only want six pins, I have to have a six pin male symbol pre-created before I could use it. This command eliminates basically all symbol creation for connectors. In this case, I want to do six pins, but I only want uh, the first six pins. So we'll go in here and do this. If I wanted to change the order, if I want six uh, pin six to be at the top, I can actually come in here and just move that up to the top. And six pin, pin six would be at the top. But I do want that to be down here at the bottom. And then I'm just going to place that guy. Let's move that right here. So there's Kong one, part number, and pins one through six. What SolidWorks is now doing is it's saying, well, do you want to place the other six pins? I'm going to say, yes, I do. I'm going to put that right here. So you see Kong 1, Kong 1. Um, and then this is pins 7 through 12. So I've got my first connector. I think I need a connector over here and a connector over here. So I'm going to come back here and say insert connector. I want to create a new connector. This time I'm going to say I just want a six pin connector. So I'm going to do a search and there's all my six pin connectors. And I'm just going to pick this one right here. So there's male pins as well but they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. Add that, go to select. Again, modify the automation on the fly. Com, and when I hit the tab key, it's gonna come, oh, con, not com. 
C-O-N, when I hit the tab key, it's going to automatically know, hey, there's already a con one, so this has got to be con two. Click on the OK button, and then I can flip this. I can hit the space bar, but as you start using the software, you get more familiar with it, you'll know this is pointing to the left, this is pointing to the right, where pin one's going to be on the top. So I just know these two buttons, and then I'll put one right here, line that up, so that's con two. And I need another one to line up here. The reason why I do it here where I've split this is because I don't want to have to like draw wires where I'm going across and then down and across. Here I can just go straight across. So I'm just going to copy this one. Control C, Control V. Now, if you notice when I do the copy, it says Con2. Let's get that lined up there like that. And then when I place it, it says, oh, there's already Con2. So we're going to make that Con3. Con so I've got my one connector on this side, my two connectors on this side. And uh, in the next webinar, we're going to go into like the wire and just really kind of do a deep dive as to what settings you need to set up for wire styles in the schematic and how those settings will affect 3D. But right now, I'm just going to wrap six wires going across this way, six wires going across this way. So I'm going to say draw single. We're just going to use a single wire. And I'm going to say six times. Even though I drew it in metric at five millimeters apart, <clears throat> I'm going to say 0.25. And I could zoom in here and try to click on that and then come over here and zoom in on here. But I use the big cursors because what I'm going to do here is kind of cheat and be lazy. Left click over here, drag, drag that over here. And then I'm going to right click and then come over here, left click, left click, right click. And then I've got all my wires drawn. And I'm going to say I'm done. Bam, Sologris will take care of trimming it. We do have all the standard drawing commands, circles, polylines, ellipses, rectangles, hatches, adding images. If we go here to modify, we have things like array, multiple copy, move. Like I said, this is more familiar, more similar to a traditional CAD program than SolidWorks. But we do have a trim and extend. But you'll see, I don't, I don't use these commands in SolidWorks Electrical. We've wanted to make this as easy as possible. So let's not worry about that. So once I get this done, I can go in the process tab, hit number new wires, say yes, and I'll go through and number those wires. And I'm pretty happy. Then if I want this to be a harness, simply highlight this, right click, add and remove from harness. I know Michael talked about this in his previous webinars. Here's my parts, here's all my wires. I'll click on yes. We'll say I want to create a new harness, H1. Click on OK, select it. I always click Add to Harness. I don't think you actually have to do that, but I like to make sure. Add the harness and then hit Select. So now if we look at from a schematic perspective, then we look at my reports. I have a build material that shows CON2, CON3, part number, quantities, CON1, part number, quantities. I have my list of wires, where they're going from, where they're going to, um, sort of my wire number. And then the big thing that's missing here is links. Okay. So I want to share with you um, a document that I created earlier for our webinar and kind of set us up. We're almost at the top of the hour. Set us up for this next presentation. The next presentation is going to be mostly just dealing with 3D. So um, let's go in here. Uh, I'm going to hit filters and say webinar. So I bring this one up. Oh, that's the one I just did. No, I don't want that one. Let's go back to the filters and make sure I pay attention to where I'm clicking. So webinar harness one. And we're going to open that up. So here's my harness. I've got J1, J2, and then over here I have P1, P2, P3, P4. It's connecting to a circuit board. Now, Michael talked about inserting components and associating. I'm going to go into like what happens if it doesn't work in our next webinar. But what I'm going to do here is we'll switch gears real quick, go back into SolidWorks. And in SolidWorks, when I turn on the electrical add-in, so add-ins, and down here, turn on the electrical add-in, what this allows me to do is access all the projects in the electrical database. So I'm just going here and say electrical product manager. And I can see the projects that I've recently opened in SolidWorks, or I can click here. And as I scroll through, you'll see there's one that's red. That means somebody has it open. Remember, I talked, we can 
do concurrent or collaborative, but this lets me know somebody has it open. Right now, it's me in SolidWorks Electrical. But I'm gonna double click on that, say, okay. So I can, in SolidWorks, I can see all the sheets. I can actually open up the sheet and view it. Can't make modifications to the schematic, but I've got an assembly. And this is the assembly that I need to work with. And here I go. So this J1, J2, he's P1, P2, P3, P4. If we look, we have access to all these. If I actually can expand this and click on this, it'll actually highlight it for me. Um, one of the cool things that uh, we don't talk about enough is if I were in schematic and I was looking at that list here and I want to know where P3 was, I can actually expand this and there's the SolidWorks model. And if I right click on that, I can say zoom in SolidWorks and it'll actually go to SolidWorks. If I give it a second, it actually zooms to that component that's been associated in SolidWorks. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, sorry, I put that on silent. Um, but how do I actually get this the route? Well, SolidWorks is a program, okay? Programs aren't smart. They're intelligent, but they're not very smart. So if I come in here and say, I wanna route a harness, we're gonna do it with splines. It makes sense, splines look like wires. And I'm just gonna come in here and say, go. And it's not gonna give me what I want. I know that right now. It's not gonna give me what I want, but this is what's gonna to happen to you. First time you use SolidWorks Electrical, you're gonna put all your components in there, you're gonna hit route harness, and it's gonna, that's not what I want. How do I get it to do what I want? So let me close this. I'm just gonna delete it. And then what I did here is I created something called a routing path. Let me actually unsuppress that, okay? So if I go in here and look at this, it's a 3D sketch, okay? There's actually even a button in the electrical tab called Define Routing Path. It just creates a 3D sketch, but it names it EW Path, so we'll know what it means, what it's for. But all I did is I actually created a line and then made it concentric to this connector. And then create a line, made it concentric to that, and then I create a line here and up here, okay? Just give it an idea as to where I want it to go. And then, when I hit route harness, I don't have to do anything else. I'm gonna hit the same button, I'm not gonna change any settings and just hit the checkbox and see what it gives us now. Now, every year SolidWorks comes out with a new version of SolidWorks. Uh, we're looking at SolidWorks 23 right now. Um, you're probably using 22. I know a lot of people are still using 2021. Um, and one of the benefits of upgrading is there's new capabilities every year we're adding new functionality correcting any issues that were uh, discovered but in this particular case i use these lines and well this is kind of realistic but we really wouldn't have this going uh basically a sharp corner if we look at my path you'll see here if i zoom in my path said it's a sharp corner well we know we can't route a wire in a sharp corner um, so SolidWorks went around that. Um, this gives us really good lengths, really uh, accurate lengths by not doing things like sharp corners. But what I can do here is now that I know I have a pass statement that works and gives me something more realistic, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one more time. And I know I've <laughs> talked to somebody that said, you know, you keep creating these really complex routes. And I mean, it's not real complex, but creating these, these 3D sweeps, and then you just keep deleting them. And it's like, I've been doing this by going into SolidWorks and creating a sketch and then creating a, uh, another sketch and then creating a sweep and then manually doing all that stuff. And it just drives me nuts to watch you delete these things. And it's like, that's why I really enjoy using SolidWorks Electrical 3D because I can just hit the button, see what it gives me, and then make a little bit of modification and I can delete, redo, delete, redo, and I can actually run through this. At this point, this is what my path looks like. I use splines in this particular case. So I can have some kind of branches where it kind of curved into the connector. So we'll just do this. I'll hit route harness again. Just hit the checkbox. This one's just with splines. But the key thing is, is I just in the few minutes that we've been in SolidWorks created three unique harnesses. 
okay? All the wire information, everything is in here. So if I look at this, this looks more realistic to me. It's just gonna really loop around here so I get more accurate, or as I like to say, because my wife's an English teacher, more better uh, routes. But if I right click on this route and go here to edit route, and I look at this segment right here, right click, and go in here to, uh, let me actually get the route, which is that. Right click and go to electrical attributes. I can see all the wires, all the individual lengths for all those wires, but this is telling me all these wires are in this segment. Now, if I cancel that out and go look over here like that, right click on this and say, zoom in. I'm getting the uh, spline handles when I right click. Uh, go here to electrical attributes now there's just these wires in this segment and if i zoom out you'll see the segments actually change size because we're losing wires we have some wires there's maybe 16 wires here and then eight go that way then eight go that way so we're going to see changes in the sizes here but more specifically we get a list of all the wires in here and as i was talking about when we went from 21 to 22 uh, or 20 to 21, I can't remember which, uh, we had the ability to use splines in these route paths, which was huge for me. I love splines. Um, in 22 to 23, uh, we have the ability now to go to this show cross section, and you can actually see the cross section and the wires, the wire numbers, and the colors right here. And then here's where I would take a screenshot, and I could put this into a drawing or a part of my PDF documentation of the project. Um, but it's just automatic. So with that being said, uh, number one, I hope you enjoyed the, the webinar. I know I covered a lot. I kind of covered some non-harnessing stuff, but I wanted to share with you kind of how easy it is to create symbols, but why creating symbols for connectors isn't really the path that we want to take. We, we use that dynamic connector or the uh, insert connector, which will dynamically create the connector based off of the properties of the part number. So it knows if it's female or male and it knows how to put the right symbols and stuff in there. And then how do we draw the wires? How do we split it? So we can have six pins on one side, six pins on the other, make them connected. Um, how we take that and make it a harness and then going over to SolidWorks, Michael taught you about associating, but I wanted to share with you a little bit on flexibility and just making simple changes to that route path and having completely different results um, as far as graphics, but any method that I chose will give me accurate results as far as lengths. And that's what most people are looking for when it comes to routing these harnesses is where, how long is this segment? How long is the overall length of the wires? That kind of information. So in our next segment, our next webinar, we'll be talking about uh, some what if situations, what happens if uh, I get errors, and more specifically, uh, how do I create drawings of these harnesses? How do I flatten it? How do I adjust that flatten and then create a drawing so I can send it off to my manufacturer? So again, this is John Lieber with Go Engineer, um, part three of our SolidWorks uh, electrical and electrical 3D uh, harnessing webinar series. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, uh, your sales manager, um, support at Go Engineer, and uh, ask questions. If you have any suggestions for web, uh, uh, webinars in the future, please let us know those as well. Thank you, and have a great day.